Many school buildings sat empty during the pandemic, and one organization believes it's time to start considering the health and safety of students as they return to class. Here to tell us more is Rachel Hodgson. She's the president and CEO of the International Well Building Institute. Good to have you here. What exactly is wrong with the schools? Well, our schools generally are in a state of decay because not only are we not funding enough new construction, but we also don't have enough money to fund basic operations and maintenance. So what that means is, you know, schools that don't have adequate ventilation and filtration, which is especially important right now in the midst of a pandemic with an airborne virus. It means that oftentimes there's mold and other conditions that are compromising our children and our teachers' ability to breathe. In many instances, and you know the story in Flint, but that is a silent and invisible problem that affects many school districts across the country where the water is actually unsafe for children to drink. We also know that there's all a whole host of other issues like inadequate lighting or access to daylight um, and many other things that are getting in the way of education. You took a study. What can be done to improve schools? Well, this report talks about the levels of need. And the good news is that there's $82 billion that are on the table right now in terms of um, the infrastructure bill that Congress is currently debating. Today, the federal government provides 1% of school facilities costs uh, to school districts and to states. And that's simply not enough. It leaves states and school districts in a place where they can't possibly pick up the rest of the tab. So what can be done is that parents and teachers and concerned citizens can pick up the phone and call their senators and their representatives to make sure that that money stays in the bill and goes to the communities that need it the most. Are you getting any pushback on this one? Because some people might not want that money to go into education. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's some degree of pushback because I think we're constantly in a place where we're stretching our dollars thin. But I think that those folks need to pay attention to the content in the report that draws a linkage between the state of school facilities conditions and educational and health outcomes. So, you know, if you're the parent who had to pull her child out of school because she was having an asthma attack Monday through Friday, you know how important this funding is, not just for our children to get a solid education, but also just to support basic aspects of their health. What else can parents do? So you can start by visiting stateofourschools2021.org and you can download a full copy of the report and a state specific profile so that you can find out exactly what's going on in your neck of the woods. And then, yeah, you pick up the phone and call that member of Congress, call that representative both locally and nationally and ask them to make the necessary investment in our children and their future. Thank you very much, Rachel, for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.